So I'm going to go about this video a little bit differently than what I usually do. Usually I go through the installation and do a first impressions of distributions, but in this case I actually went ahead and installed Deepin 20.2 on my primary system and I've been using it for about 24 hours as my daily driver. And because of this, I actually did learn a lot about the system, some of the pros and cons, and we're gonna be going into that in this video. But first, this is a new release, so I am gonna go over some of the new feature changes in Deepin 20.2. So in preparation for this video, I didn't really change too many settings, so most everything is gonna be kinda default. So this is the default web browser here. It's actually fairly good looking. And when I go ahead and search up deep and you're going to see the default, I won't go. You're going to see the default search engine is Chinese. This is a Chinese distribution, but lately they've been doing some pretty good things to make it more accessible to English countries. But even with that said, there are going to be a lot of Chinese things you're going to run into throughout this distribution. And I will also note this is a Debian based distribution. So it's not based on Ubuntu. It's based on Debian. 10.8 to be exact. So you do have all the Debian repositories, the Debian commands and all that. So you can update with apt-get and all that fun stuff. So if I go ahead and click on something, it's probably gonna take me to the Chinese website here. Um, no, see, I'm, I'm just gonna go directly to the URL. I'm gonna end up changing that. Uh, Deepin English. And then on their website, you see community news, Deepin 20.2, beautiful and wonderful as self-described. And here it will go over some of the changes. So first of all, They've upgraded to the 5.10 kernel. If I go ahead and open up the terminal here, this is their deep end terminal. One thing that is nice about this is a lot of the stock applications are their own applications, and they've done a very good job when it comes to the design of these. So if I go ahead and NeoFetch, you can see that we are running the 5.10 kernel out of the gate. We have the Bash shell. They are, they are borrowing Kwin, that's the uh, KDE Plasma window manager, so they're using that and then the rest is just deep and stuff. So we're good to close that out. They upgraded the underlining repositories. Like I said, they use uh, Debian. So they're using the Debian 10.8 stable repositories by default. Down here, it says they just did some code optimization. So some of the uh, default applications and all that will run better with less memory usage, faster startups, faster responses. So they said that was an improvement. File Manager got some new improvements such as uh, refining time access, time modified stuff. You could actually edit the unmounted disks names and there's some better search functionality. Disk Utility, this is a really nice utility here. They added a new feature called Verify and Repair Bad Sectors. I know you could do this in the terminal, but this is really nice. It's a tool that you should actually use if you go out and buy a hard drive, you should verify to see if there are any bad sectors. Just in case if there is any damage in shipping, you want to be able to return your hard drives in. Uh, get something that works properly. So that is a magnificent tool to have. Their mail application has gotten some updates such as being able to actually schedule emails, email signature, do screen captures within the email application, and they have a download tool, which I actually went ahead and tested out. I will show you that in just a little bit. And then below this is the full change log with everything that's either new or improved. And of course, I will be linking to this page that I just showed you down in the description below. So you can see everything that has changed within the Deepin Linux distribution. Now with that said, first I'm gonna be talking about some of the things I really, really do enjoy about this distribution. In particular, compared to last time I took a look at Deepin, there has been a lot of changes even since then. And the big thing is their app store. Their app store has gotten way better, uh, mostly because before I checked it out, it was like half of it was in Chinese and I didn't really, I couldn't really figure out what was going on there. So it's gotten a lot better English support. You can see it's a little uh, glitchy with the drag, but it's gotten a lot better English support. You can see all the uh, ranking applications here. You see their hot apps and then their uh, applications that have gotten new updates and it works pretty good. So if I go ahead and let's install GIMP real quick. On the GIMP page, you can see it has reviews and downloads. Most of the reviews are in Chinese, being that this is a Chinese distribution, but there are a couple English little reviews that sneak in here and there. And downloading applications, you just click install and it'll begin downloading and installing. One thing that's questionable to me is it doesn't really ask for a password. I like that, but I haven't, see it's already installing without asking for a password, so I'm not sure how or exactly what's going on with that but you do have all the information you need. You have screenshots here. You have information on the developer, the size, and all that kind of stuff here. If I actually go over to downloads, 
Uh, it takes a sec to load. It does give you a really good overview of how much is downloaded, the download speed. Uh, you see it was successfully installed. So the actual download screen is very informative. If I go over to updates, you see I have no new updates, but it gives you specific change logs, ratings, and everything like that with the actual updates. And then you have a My App screen over here, so it's going to load up all your local applications. And then from here, if you want to, you could actually go through and uninstall applications through this. It gives you a good idea of the size, the versions, the date you actually installed that application. Their app store has gotten significant improvements. It's really coming along. If I go over to Internet, there's probably something in here that I need. So if I go, let's say I wanted to install Firefox. It's Firefox ESR. I'm not sure exactly. Free browser, rich plugins, and eh, probably good enough for me. Let's go ahead and install Firefox. So if I go over to downloads, like I was talking about, you can see here it gives you very specific information on the download speed, how much of your download is downloaded and all that. You could pause, stop, and do everything through here. So that is wonderful improvements through there. And just overall, all their applications are really beautiful. Like with anything, it's subjective. So it's a hit or miss for you whether or not if you like how this looks. And I'm not sure if it's a screen recorder, but it's usually not this uh, choppy when I resize applications. But I do like how everything's laid out. If I go over to like home, for example, or the, all the applications are in kind of this bubble touch screen look. But if you don't like that, you can switch it over to kind of a list view and you have an option here to uh, toggle the information. So the time access, time modified. And down here you can get into like your computer, go into your system disk and actually play around in there. If I go ahead and close this out here, let's, uh, Let's check out, I'm gonna go over some of the applications that I really like. Oh, there's the Firefox I downloaded. See, it's it's in Chinese. So the, I'm gonna uninstall this and find one that's English, but uh, that's an example of things you're gonna run into if you actually use their app store. You might install something that's uh, built primarily for the Chinese market. Uh, so let's close this out. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> So uh, one thing I really wanted to show you guys was the deep end downloader. I already tested this with an Ubuntu torrent, but I'll go ahead and test it again. So if I go and download Ubuntu, let's download the server edition this time. So it's right here. You can see it's a little bit torrent link, but when you go ahead and open that up, it's going to open up with the download manager. And here you have your actual torrent. If you've ever used torrents before, you can uh, download or pick what specific files you want. So I just hit download now. I'm gonna change this to light theme. Another thing I really like is not only can you go by your system theme, but within individual applications, you can select if you want to use the light or dark themes. And now it's downloading. So this is a very, very good downloading application right here. If you select it, you can pause, delete, uh, you can add more right here. You have an option to deselect, so you can do multiple downloads for a specific action. Another thing I really like about this is within these settings, there's actually a pretty good set of uh, speed settings. You could actually limit your speeds, limit upload speeds. So if you're really tight on bandwidth or something, you could set it not to seed torrents, things like that. This is a wonderful application. Damn. This is one of the good things about gigabit internet. It's wonderful. Okay. So close this out. That downloaded. Uh, exit. Confirm. Bingo. Let's briefly skim over some of the applications it comes with so we could kind of judge it. Um, I did add some of these so it like doesn't come with Audacity. Their terminal, you saw this, it's a pretty nice little app here. You have different tabs that you could open up so you could do different things at once. Under settings, you'd have the typical terminal settings that you'd expect so you can change the opacity. You can make it look really beautiful. I don't want to sound too redundant, but all their applications, they've done a very good job, at least when it comes to the uh, design. So let, let's go ahead and talk about things that either don't work or I really did not like about this. Now, the one thing I'm not going to get too into that I don't like is the fact that you have to agree to a EULA when you install this. That's not something we really like. Um, if I go over here to settings and I go to display, they have display scaling. Now, the idea of display scaling, especially if you have like a 4K screen and your little toolbar on the bottom, you can't even see it, is great, but it sets it to 1.5 out of the gate for me. And this is actually my second take going over this, well, second take making this video. And I talked crap, so much crap in the beginning because it was set to 1.5 and all the icons were like blown out of proportion. It like the actual web browser had glitches within the actual UI which is extremely counterintuitive because the whole point of Deepin is how beautifully it's designed. 
and for it to ship out of the gate with how pretty it's supposed to be with icons pixelated and lines not straight it just wasn't a good first look for sure but setting the display scaling down to just one fixed everything so i can't talk too much crap about it but if you actually want to use display scaling it looks like garbage now another thing i noticed i don't know if this is a bug or how it's supposed to be or if it's a glitch let's open up a couple different applications here so we got obs settings web browser and all that Right here, you have your multitask view. If I go ahead and click on that, you can see my workspaces here, and it looks good with the icons up there in the workspaces with the different backgrounds. But here, I do not think it's supposed to look like this. I think these are supposed to be window previews, but they're just coming through as icons. If it's supposed to be like that, they should probably change it. And if it's not supposed to be like that, they should probably fix it. So, so far in the first 24 hours of me using this, those are the really only cons that I've noticed. It's a Chinese distribution, so I can't get upset that there's Chinese characters and all that. That's just not fair. But I can not like the scaling thing and that task viewer just doesn't look good. Uh, I'm getting a little notification, so let's check for updates. Let's see if we actually have any here. Yep, system update. Let's see if I can actually see some details on that details oh uh yeah so like i said it's not fair for me to not like that because this is <laughs> so can i can i copy this so uh it just moves the window so i can't copy and paste it into a translator so that's something that should be uh addressed okay putting aside what i don't like another thing that's really nice is their screen capture utility so if i go screen capture this has been improved. So first you can see it doesn't come up right away. It's actually wanting me to select what I want to capture. So like if I go over the taskbar, it will only capture the taskbar. If I add another window open, it would only capture that window. If I click, it brings up this up here. You see I have the option to screenshot, record. I could draw different, different arrows and text and all that fun stuff. And this button right here is to actually do it. This button's to close it. But the thing I really like about it is if I go ahead and hit record, and actually let's open up a folder. Actually, no, I'll just record the full thing. One thing you could do other than doing general screen recording through this is you can make uh, GIFs or GIFs. So if I go to GIF and I hit the start recording button, so let's start recording. It's gonna go three, two, one. So let's just open up an application, move it around real quick, open a folder and then stop the recording so you see it down here. I think it's just right click on it, or click, or double click, or double right click. Uh, stop recording to save video automatically when disabling the window of the window effect. Uh, Deepen screen recorders, MP format. Uh, stop record, same keystroke that start deepen. Maybe I have to reopen it. Screen capture, oh, okay. I had to open it to stop it. Okay, so the very last thing I'm gonna to touch on real quick is the UI of the system. Very pretty, as you can see. Uh, this is your bar on the bottom. Right now it's in fashion mode, so you have mode here, you could do efficient mode, which kind of makes it just a traditional looking taskbar along the bottom, very Windows 10-esque. But I actually do like their fashion mode, especially with a bigger display. On a display with a smaller resolution, or if you're the scaling is sky high, it's not gonna to look too good, but it does look good like this. Over here, you have buttons to show the desktop. We have that multitasking view we saw. Your favorited icons are in the middle. Your task manager stuff, including volume and networking is right here. If you click on time, it brings up a calendar. And then you have power. You have a little virtual keyboard that you could bring up. And then if you click over here on the bell, it brings up the little notification panel so you can see all your system notifications here. So if I go ahead and bring that back to the side, there's actually another mode for the actual menu. So this is your menu here, but if you click on this, it brings up a full screen menu. So it's kind of like the GNOME application menu. Recording finished. Should probably figured out how to actually use that before I included it. But in, in addition to this full application uh, view, you could click over here, which will actually categorize your application. So you have graphics, video, office, it does ship with the LibreOffice applications. You have all your system tools, including your device manager. The system monitor is actually a very, very nice system monitor here. You could see a overview of everything that's going on on the side, as well as your open applications. If you go to services, you have a full detail of everything going on in your system. But overall, this is a beautiful system monitor. So without making this video too long, 
Uh, what I'm actually going to try to do, I, I'm going to try, I can't promise, is I'm going to try using Deepin for like a week. I'm going to see if I could actually handle using a Debian-based operating system like this for a week. And I'm going to report back to you guys on how the experience went and any other improvements, changes, updates, anything I've noticed throughout my time of using it. So do make sure you are subscribed and you ring that bell to see the update on me trying to use this as a daily driver. As somebody who uses Arch-based systems exclusively, this may prove to be difficult, but we will see. Uh, with all that said, I do hope you have a very good day. Like I said, so you don't miss that and other future content, subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment down below telling me if you've tried this or what your favorite Debian system is. Like this video if you did, dislike it if you hated it. I hope you all have a beautiful day and good Bye.